So theoretical physicists have been saying all along that the problem with quantum te telepathy isn't that it doesn't exist. The problem is that it is so complex, human brains can't do it. Well, I'm here to tell you, those physicists are dead wrong. <laughs> In 2011, in The Big Think, Dr. Michio Kaku stated that he believed that quantum entanglement telepathy was possible, but that there were easier ways of having the same results. And yes, it's easier to pick up your cell phone and call your bestie than it is to indulge in quantum telepathy. But not everyone has access to the technology at all times. We don't always have our phones in our pockets. Well, Americans do, but not everyone does. So <laughs> what is it that would make quantum entanglement telepathy something that all of us can do? Now, I am providing a link up here to uh, Dr. Kaku's original uh, video so you can see exactly what he had to say. And just so you know, I have the ultimate respect for this man. He is a certifiable genius. He is the co-founder of string field theory, which is one of the things that makes the understanding of quantum entanglement telepathy and quantum entanglement manifestation even possible. The biggest objection to using quantum entanglement as a form of telepathy is a concept called coherence and decoherence. Coherence is when two particles are vibrating in sync with each other. They are completely matched and because of that match they have the electronic bridge uh, that allows information to be passed from one to the other, for a qubit to move from one particle to another particle. This is what we use for quantum communication now. The objection to being able to use this for telepathy is decoherence. The theory is that there are so many particles involved. The brain is so complex that when you have two brains, there is just no way you can get both of them completely in sync so that you can send and receive messages between them. And on the surface, that does make sense. From a purely theoretical physical level, that makes sense. But we're talking people here, and people very seldom make sense when it comes to purely an applied science level. So we have to go into not just the science, but the art involved in quantum entanglement telepathy. There are actually two ways that we can use quantum entanglement to telepathically communicate with each other. The first one of these is using the reticulate activated system to parse through the energy coming into the brain, narrow down the, art, the areas of the brain that need to be in coherence with each other and thereby send and receive messages. Now this is the method that you find when you do uh, studies of twins that have telepathic communication. And frequently twins who are telepathic with each other also have other unique communication forms like twin speak, the language that they develop between themselves from infancy on. What is happening with the twins is their brains are completely in sync with each other. Maybe not every atom, but enough that they can send and receive these messages. Right now, my brain is taking in hundreds and millions of pieces of information. Temperature, sunlight, water temperature, water speed, wind speed, wind direction, sight, smell, the sounds, the everything around me. I'm still tasting the pastry I had for breakfast. I am feeling the cold. I am feeling the wind. I am feeling everything. But my brain is narrowing these perceptions down. The reticular activating system is filtering out the vast majority of the information that I'm taking in. And it's narrowing it down to just a few key pieces that it determines I need to know for my immediate health and survival. Now this narrowing down of extra information 
is what makes us able to respond so quickly to what's going on around us. But it also means that we are filtering out the vast majority of the energetic fields, including the messages that are being sent to us. By being able to use the RAS to filter through the extraneous material, then someone who is in close sync with another human being can directly receive messages from them. It's, you know, not a perfect medium. There is no perfect medium, but it is reliable enough as long as you maintain that synchronicity with the other person. Now, the second method of quantum entanglement telepathy is the one that gets really esoteric and really out there, but it is also the most reliable form of quantum telepathy. You do not have to worry about coherence at all. Whether or not your brain is in sync with someone else's brain completely does not matter. What matters is whether or not you are in sync with the vibration of the universe as a whole. You see, we are all part of a larger construct. That larger universal consciousness is an energetic field that is produced by us, is a part of us, but is also greater than any one of us. It is, think of the force, it is the energetic field that binds all things together. And this is true of whether or not you're sentient, whether or not you're conscious, whether or not you have what we consider life. All things have vibration, even the seemingly solid objects. Like this wall has a vibrational frequency. If you know the vibrational frequency of it, then you can uh, interact with it. This is something we do on an instinctive level most of the time. But when we are looking at quantum entanglement telepathy, we can utilize that greater external energy, that universal consciousness, to deliver the messages for us. It's like um, if you're swimming in the same ocean with a partner, you're both, you know, if you're both scuba diving, you are both in the same water, you are both experiencing the same sights and sounds, you are both able to communicate with each other through a variety of mediums other than speech. What we are doing with quantum entanglement telepathy is we are taking this energy that we are communicating. We are putting it into the greater universal consciousness field and then the person that we are sending it to can remove that energy from the field, decode it, and understand the message coming through. You do not have to worry about coherence between the individuals because all that matters is the coherence between the individual and the universal consciousness. So how do we reach this point of coherence with the greater universal consciousness? That is done through meditation. Yes, to communicate with the external, you have to go within first. In a sense of meditation, you learn to burrow down through the ego brain and into the energetic field that makes up who you are. Once you connect with that energetic field, you're creating physiological changes in your body. The energy between your heart and your mind connects and you get this flow of energy through you that has nothing whatsoever to do with the conscious brain but everything to do with the wholeness of your being. As you enter into this state, then you can sit there and feel your connectedness with everything. As you enter into the state of feeling into the connectedness of the universal consciousness, as you sense your place in it, then you feel an expansion of your energetic field to include everything, everyone and anyone. And I know that sounds completely and utterly crazy, but 
if you read up from uh, the works of Dr. Joe Dispenza, he has the scientific studies to back this up. This is a very real phenomenon. And as you learn to do this phenomenon, then you can utilize this ability to do the quantum entanglement telepathy. So uh, for the theoretical physicists out there, thank you so much for laying the groundwork for this. But let's move on past just what physics can explain.